Hey mermaids, hi. It's Tracy and my channel is Tracy from the Mermaid Co. Thank you for stopping by. This is more of a vlog where I'm talking. I can't explain it, but it when I do this, I feel heard. I guess it's like my new therapy. I don't know, but I um, just want to talk a little bit about Oscar and um, see, I cried all morning so I wouldn't cry now. But apparently, my emotions aren't listening to the plan, which is typical. I still wanted to talk about my animal communicator. Um, she's been such a gift to me and my animals that I wanted to just explain how it works. And, you know, the different experiences I've had. Her name is Lydia Hibby. L-Y-D-I-H-I-B-Y. I'm going to try to a link below, which I'm not sure I can, but I'll have it on my Instagram too. She um, has a website. And how I found her is there is an artist named Claudine Helmuth who I took classes from and got to know her. And she was in Florida at the time. And <coughs> she got, excuse me, my cough. She had gone to that British woman who had a TV show. And she thought it was okay, but someone had told her about Lydia and she really, you know, because Lydia is amazing. Um, so she told me about her, so I tried her. So the first time I tried her, I gotten, um, you, you know, my, I didn't, ha I didn't have her. We had a cat named Hitchcock. I was my, my niece's brother's cat and they were selling their house. <coughs> and so the real estate agent is like, Oh, you know, get rid of the litter box. You know, can your cat stay? So the Hitchcock came to us and we, of you know, there they had two kids and a mess stuff going on. And, you know, he bonded really hard with me and my mother. So by the time he was supposed to go back, he started pooping and peeing everywhere. So we got him back, smart boy. But at the time that we lost him, I didn't know about Lydia. So, you know, the only way you really, I think, heal your heart is having another animal. But you need time for that. But anyway, we adopted a cat named Lulu. And she was older, I have no idea. And she was sort of neurotic and a mess. Like one time, she honestly, I'm not exaggerating, pooped on top of my mother when she was sleeping. But she'd be affectionate. It, we thought something's gone, something's wrong here with this girl. So I had found out about Lydia. So that was the first time we used her and just kind of like wanted to know what had happened to her, like what has been her life experiences. But the first thing Lulu told Lydia was that she was more than a cat. She was like my personal advisor, especially with makeup and um, clothes. And for some reason with Lulu, I don't know why, but when in the morning she was always on my bed with me and I would say, hey, do you think I should wear this top or that top? And do you like my makeup? You know, should I wear lipstick? Do you like this lipstick? I just, I don't know what it was, but that's what I did every day pretty much. And I could feel her, what she liked and what she didn't like. Because, you know, most of us who have cats, you know, cats communicate, well, physically, verbally, but also telepathically. That's why you could be thinking about taking him to the vet and you won't see him. So, uh, yeah, that was very interesting. Um, but anyway, so it's true. Now, I couldn't say that about any cat before that or any since then. So Claire and I do a little bit. So that blew me away, it blew my mother away. Cause my mother is like, was doubting Thomas all the time. And I get it, it's strange. Like what, you're gonna pay money to someone who's gonna talk to your cat. And you know, I could be in another city. I could be at work, my cat could be at home and Lydia's in Florida right now. So I get it, it's strange, but she's the deal. She's the real deal. And I want everyone to investigate her that has animals and try her. Now she right now, I think it's $60 for 15 minutes for one pet. And I don't know about you, but other than getting my cat's nails clipped, that's maybe $30. You can't walk out of the vet having spent 60. So it's the best money you'll ever spend. And it will give you peace of mind and it will help you understand what's going on with your animal, which is absolutely the most important thing. That's worth 60 bucks, you know? So that was Lulu and Lulu had actually told her she got trapped in a garage for a few days and had um, gotten into chemicals, which makes perfect sense because that's, she acts like someone who was a huffer. 
but you know, we gave her a good quality of life. And at the end when she couldn't eat anymore and I was trying to force feed her, which, you know, a cat that doesn't want to be force fed or be eat is a problem. So that last time we, Lydia and I talked, you know, she was hiding behind the computer's table back in the day. Remember that behind the CPU. And I asked Lydia to ask her to come out and she did. And she just sat there. And so we were, um, yeah. And basically she would, she needed to go. She was ready to go. It was time. And, um, yeah, so it just gives you a peace of mind that, cause it's hard. Are you doing the right thing? Is it time to go? Are they in pain? You know? And she wasn't in pain. She was uncomfortable a little bit. She was, they get very tired. So that's what we did. And, you know, after time a little bit, I um, had remembered I was at a PetSmart kind of place, maybe Petco, you know, where they do animal, cat adoptions, especially all the time. And there had been the most beautiful, okay, I skip. No, no, I'm skipping Molly. So I started feeling like we need a new cat and um, or I needed a new cat. So I went into PetSmart. Now I'm not someone who can just go all the time and look. I, I really can't, I'm coming home with a cat. Right? I, I can't. But I went into PetSmart and they were having, you know, the adoptions and this cat I saw, she's a little bit of a Maine Coon, small. And I said, can I see her? And she said, well, she's a little shy. Well, I picked her up and she literally put her arms around me and put her, you know, they always say the cat picks you and put her little head on mine. And, and someone had placed an adoption with her, but he hadn't shown up and it had been more than 24 hours. So she said, I think this is your cat. So I surprised my mom because my mom just, you know, heart would be so broken. She just didn't think she could do it again. But of course, once you have a new animal to love, it's different. And I think a little bit of all the animals you love come with that. So anyway, so I got Molly home, you know, gave it a week and then called Lydia and, um, it was the funniest thing. Molly, first question she asked is why did the people not keep her? Why didn't they want her? And she had been at a farm and she wanted to be an indoor outdoor cat and they didn't want her indoors. So they gave her up. So I said, one, they were dumb, but two, you were meant for us. You're our cat. You're meant, you know, we're your people. And she said, they kept calling me pumpkin, but my name was Punkin. But that she also liked Molly. And but the biggest thing she asked for was a collar with diamonds, clear diamonds. She didn't care the background color as much, but she wanted them to be clear diamonds. My mother was like, that is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard of in my entire life. But Molly also wanted to be an only cat. Now, I always liked the idea of two cats and we never had two cats, but I just think it's nice. Um, but Molly was like, no, I, I want to be an only cat. And my mom's like, yeah, my mom believed that part, of course. But so I went and I got her collar and my mom was watching. She's like, she didn't want a collar. Cause you know, we've never had cats. So I want collars, right? But that cat, she goes like this. She sits there. She looks at me. She goes, put her neck out waiting to put that collar. Cause she's a princess. She loved that collar. <laughs> so my mom was like, still. Still, right? You know, she just, once you're a doubt in person, you're a doubt in person. And I tend to be a believer on some regards. So that was Molly. And she was so loving and such good company for my mother and me. And yeah, she just was a companion, you know, like a person. But um, one time we noticed, now I'm someone I take my animals to the vet all the time. We noticed like she was hiding in a closet. Like I had to look for her. And that's a sign that an animal's sick. It's actually a sign that they're really sick. So we took her in and she had gotten um, a tumor on her, like, I don't know, in her jaw. So I brought her home and, um, you know, talked to Lydia and, uh, yeah, she was ready to go. She was tired. She wasn't in pain, but she needed to go. And the, that we would she would, she would find me. She would come back to me, which actually, you know, and, and 
which was hard for me because I kept looking for her. I didn't know. And I can remember calling Lydia and just saying, I'm just a wreck. I don't under, she's like, don't, you know, relax. Your cat will find you and it's going to find you. You can't miss your cat. And I thought, I felt like I could. So anyway, so, you know, Miss Molly, we let her go. And then my mom retired. <coughs> and she would call me at work all the time. Knew she was lonely. My mom is a people person. She, did, she worked at the Capitol. She was talking to people nonstop all day. She's on the train talking to people. On the bus talking to people. <coughs> so here she is. <coughs> and I had remember being in PetSmart at Petco one time and seeing this beautiful white cat that was for adoption. But Molly wanted to be an only cat. So I went there on a Sunday and asked the woman about the cat. And she said, oh, yeah, no, that cat's not available. I think she kept that cat. But she's like, I do have these, this brother and sister. They're Siamese, and I'm looking for a home for them. And I said, okay. Um, you know, they're like a year and a half. They had come from Ohio. Someone had put them a chunk of the car. There had been three of them, and one died. You know, a tough start. And... Yeah, so I said, sure, let me bring them in. I knew I'd probably leave with them. But I told her it was a surprise for my mom, and they don't like that. I said, no, really, trust me, these cats aren't coming back. But I didn't want to hear any fussing from my mother because that's what I would have gotten. So I go to meet her, and we're in the bathroom, and they're full of fleas. And she's treating their ear, and, you know, I mean, I was just so upset for them. But, uh... So, and Clara's seal point, as you've seen, so she's more of the traditional Siamese and Oscar's link point. So somebody had seen Clara and wanted to take her alone. And she's a little rip in her ear, which I hate to even think about how she got that. But, um, you know, the woman's like, well, I can fix that for you. I'm like, no, I'm going to take them as is. And her ears are charming and absolutely not. So we went through all the process. Brought him home. Of course, my mother having a fuss. But I put him in our bathroom to, like, kill the fleas off them. Like, I comb them and kill fleas. And, you know, uh, yeah. I think they were in a hoarding situation. So, and I remember picking up Claire and showing her the mirror, how pretty she was. I'm like, look how pretty you are. What a beautiful cat. And when, probably, like, two days later, we talked to Lydia... And Claire said she didn't even know she was a cat till she saw, this is what she said. Now, I didn't say, tell this, that I did this to Lydia, right? Claire tells Lydia, yeah, I didn't even know I was a cat until she picked me up and showed me in the mirror. Okay, I've never done that with another cat, right? So, she's specific, right? Like, oh, yeah, I loved, you know, no, she's specific. So there's no doubt. It's, and I'm not trying to convince anyone because you can't. And thank God with age comes the desire not to make anyone believe anything that they don't believe. But I like to share. And for those of you who are like on the fence <coughs> or like, what? Check it out because it's truly amazing. And I love that. That's the whole point of my YouTube channel is to share things. So um, they had a rough start. I didn't get the medical attention. And I can't think of it now, but there's something cats get now. It's like feline leukemia or feline something. It's something that's not contagious. There's one that's contagious to other cats, and this wasn't that one. But it really hurt. I think it's really not good for their health. But um, they like their names. Clara had actually been called Kara. So she was okay with that. Oscar likes Oscar. And, uh, yeah, so that's how, you know, uh, um, kind of got introduced to each other and, you know. So <clears throat> my mom, it was hard for my mom because Molly was super interactive and was with her all the time and Claire was terrified and under a bed and at this house she'd been at she pretty much was bullied and she stayed under the bed so it took her a long time Oscar is different because he loves food and he had never gotten enough food so my vet told me you know this last couple of weeks that he went from 12 to 16 pounds in a year because my mom was home <laughs> so yeah but so, you know, I, like, Oscar had to have his teeth pulled out pretty, I don't know, a year after we had him, maybe two years, I don't remember. So that seemed, you know, of course, uh, 
It was very expensive, but we did. I remember the cold January morning, freezing, I got up to take him to do this. Um, but he did fine. He understood. So I started, you know, I talked to Lydia, so he knows what's happening. And, and then when he had this colon thing, it's called megacolon. And I, I didn't, I like, I watch these cats. Like I know when they're, some things are having a bad day or if they're breathing differently. I'm just like, like that. But he ended up with something called megacolon, which I didn't know at the time. And he literally had like an apple in his colon, a fecal matter. And my, um, <clears throat> I was house, house pet sitting. This is the first time since my mom died. Yeah. Well, after my mom died, um, or during the time my mom was sick, you know, Oscar was upset. And sometimes I could, you know, sometimes I would spend the night there. Sometimes I would come home and I had people coming whenever I could to give food, but we live out of the way, sort of. It was challenging and I would put out dry food, but I know he was eating it all immediately. And like, I'd come home and he'd pooped at the front door and he had a hard time. And uh, so then after my mom died, we, we um, you know, Lydia, we all had a conversation and they said they knew my mom had come and told them. And um, but one time before that it was interesting. I don't know. Clara had said something like, well, when I guess I was saying, Clara, you don't show me any attention or, you know, and it was really like Oscar's my cat. Clara was really my mom's cat. And um she told Lydia, well, she, but Lydia had stopped. It was almost like, well, when your mom's going to die soon and I'm going to become your cat. And, but basically that was it. All her loyalty and attention would go to me. And I can remember one time my mom and I were watching a movie and it was late, like 11, 15, which is late for us. But we wanted to finish the movie and Claire came down and pretty much told my mother, no, you're coming to bed. Like, no, she's like, she wasn't having it. It was so funny. It's such a bossy thing. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so after my mom died, we all talked, and I said, you know, I'm going to need a roommate, and, you know, of course, they weren't happy, and Clara is a big problem for Clara, and it's just why I put it off, but to the point now, I, it's something we need to do. Um, so anyway, so Oscar had that mega colon, and he, so I was at a different vet, and he had to, um, they kept him for like four days, and they don't really do that, but the vet was coming in and they'd have to give him enemas and then put him to sleep and literally chisel this stuff out. Now, I still don't know how that happened to that extreme. Um, so, so for megacolon basically means your colon is not pushing stuff out. So after we got all that out, it was a, I've never seen that cat look so messed up. We um, started with food a kind of, you know, fiber food. And then we started with um, drugs that kind of mimic it, but really it wasn't working. So I talked to three different vets. My vet, this other vet I'd gone to, and then the consult list of that, the surgeon, that they can remove most of the colon, that obviously, and cats go on and live a great life. So I did all my research and research and, um, you know, read what people had to say and he had to get all these tests done and basically he was healthy. His joints looked good. Everything looked good that he was at a prime time that we were going to do it sooner would be better and that, um, do it. So we did, I, I can't describe to you. It was like nine, but the whole time and done, it was $10,000 between being at the doctor for that is insane. I fear that only wealthy people are going to have animals soon. But I have thoughts about that. So, and now I think back and it's like, I didn't ask him what he wanted to do. I was pretty much like, here's what's happening. So don't know now. I don't know. I, I don't regret it. But maybe when it's something that crazy and that expensive, that's the thought of like, huh. But when you're in it, you just want your animal to live and you'll do what you'll do. Anything. I would not eat. I will like never get my hair done again. I will, you know, live in heat. So I don't know. We did it. It was tough. Oh, Jesus, it was tough. And um, he hated the cone. And but what I did is, and he couldn't jump up, right? So I, nowhere in my house are there doors. So even the bathroom, he could jump up on the tub. It was a mess. So I got these two, like they're called puppy tents. Like they're for puppies to play in, but they're like a tent. I got two of those suckers. They're like eight bucks and had flaps. So I had one for his bathroom and then one for him to sleep and eat. He hated it. Okay, and the cone, my God, it was just, oh, he was so angry. So about three or four weeks into it, I remember like I woke up one morning and he was at the bottom of my bed. And I was like, what the hell? But I talked to the vet 
<coughs> and he had healed. I think we'd gone to the vet once and then we were going back to my other vet. Um, of course, it was an hour and a half away, all this other vet and operation. But he said, you know, he's healing beautifully. Maybe we can go ahead and, you know, he won't jump up and he'll do. But then you have a, col a cat with no colon or there's, a, you know, the beginning and the end. I want to describe to you the gas. Like, think of the most rotten broccoli on a July day. Wow. And, uh, yeah. So, all this again was the January before quarantine started. And I'd been with him like two weeks. And then, you know, it was gone back to work. And But I had put a litter box in my living room. And this huge thing with paper, you know, newspaper so he could poop there. And... You know, he did mostly, but sometimes I guess, you know, just overcame him. I had a litter box in my bathroom, so upstairs. So he, you know, there were litter boxes everywhere, but um, it was tough, you know, to overcome him. I know he wasn't super comfortable, but he started to heal pretty well. I mean, like my vet said, he's doing amazing. You know, she said I was nervous, but he healed really well. And anyway, here's a picture of my Bubba. Here's Oscar. My brother, this is old, my brother snuck in to our other house and took a bunch of pictures for Oscar. My mom loved pictures. And actually I want to have this blown up and put on canvas and I'll show you where all the pictures of my other cats are. But I have a good one of us in the selfie, so I might do that one, but yeah, he's, look at him. But Claire, you know, nowhere to be found, but my mom, those blue eyes, look at my Bubba. Look at my Bubba's blue eyes. Anyway, yeah, my brother, he's just an insane photographer. <clears throat> so, I could tell he wasn't feeling good and I noticed he was drinking and peeing an awful lot and I brought him into the vet and he had diabetes. So, and I've been trying to get weight off him. It was really hard. The hard me being home. I have food issues. He has food issues. I was like, I could feel his pain. Um, but yeah, so we started the insulin. What am I going to do? I'm going to give my cat insulin, which is insanely expensive. It was like $250 for like, I don't know, 40 days. And this, anyway, what I had to do is like, did it for two weeks, brought him in on a Monday. So he um, would be there. I drop him off at like eight. I pick him up at like 3.30 and they test his blood sugar all day or I could learn how to do it. But me putting a little hole in his, anyway, I didn't think that was going to be good, but his numbers weren't going down. And he's like, well, are you doing it right? It's like, well, okay, I think so. Um, and so I did an experiment where I did it just on top and it's super sticky. So I knew I was doing it right, but we switched, right? And we got different syringe and the same thing. Like his numbers in the morning, I don't even know what a normal number is, like low 200s. Um, but be go like from 560 down to 420 maybe, but then the second and third were back up. So then... And she didn't want to necessarily give him more. I think we were at 0.6. We, she said like, you know, some animals do well, like on a high fiber diet. All right. So we're going to give them high fiber food. And then, uh, you know, sometimes in the insulin will work or we can try another insulin. So, um, yeah. So meanwhile, now he starts peeing on the carpet and, um, I can smell it. Like I've never, I hate that smell. Anyway, I'm getting the carpets clean left and right. But <clears throat> I could start to tell he um, he wasn't feeling good. Like the under part, uh, like I comb my cats all the time because you know it's so much fun to comb a cat. But the under part, I could tell was raggedy. And then one time he was wet, and I could tell he peed. So he has a he has a tree. Let me show you his tree. See his little tree? He used to get up on the top. Anyway, he get I had a little thing, so that's where he he loved to sleep there. But I can tell he peed there. Um, you know, not my god, my guy, my Sir Oscar. That's not that's not good. So I called Lydia, and um, she said, in a way that she was like, oh, I could tell. She said, you know, he's so tired, and she said, you know, sometimes cats will tell me, yeah, you know, I'm probably gonna be around through Christmas, or I'll be around in a few more months. And this was Tuesday. And she said, he's saying Friday. So, um, you know, it's the Friday before Memorial Day. And I was thinking, well, 
you know, I'm off Monday and I've taken Tuesday off and, uh, but I knew I was, I think I was home in the afternoon Wednesday and Thursdays I telework all day. I used to telework all day at home, but I could tell. And my vet was leaving on vacation, her first one in like a year and a half. And I didn't want to do it with anyone else. This would be my third animal with her, fourth actually. So I called and I said, um, and she said to me, Lydia said, you know, he's ready. And she said, he wants me to call him Sir Oscar, which I call him that sometimes. And he's all, I mean, does this not look like a Sir Oscar? Come on. And that he was a magical cat because he survived having his colon removed. And she said, he said that he didn't think he would survive it, which, you know, now that I look about it, I didn't ask him. I told him what was happening. So anyway, um, it's like he knew I needed him. So he stayed, went through that for me. So I knew, you know, that. Like, to me, the sacred contract with animals is that you let them go. You do not make them live one more hour to make you feel better. And I know it's hard, but if you talk to Lydia or another animal communicator, it's so peaceful. It's hard. Trust me, I miss him, but he's not suffering. So basically, he was like, yeah, I'm ready to go. And he said to her, now tell her I'll come back really quickly if she needs me my bubba and I said no no you be on your journey you know plus I know I get obsessed and start looking everywhere and I didn't want to do that so I want to concentrate on Clara and I said I'm not even sure I can afford another animal right now so I said do you do you go on your journey you're on your journey okay and you take care of yourself you've done a great job of taking care of me and now it's time for you to move on <sighs> So she said, text me Thursday, which you don't usually do, but I'm going to tell you this. When there's a crisis, I shouldn't care about money. I mean, she makes a living. She has to, right? Money's not her motivator. She could charge a lot more than she charges. Um, and one time with Molly, I had let Molly go, and I knew it was that day, and I got a hold of her, and we, and she helped me and Molly have a goodbye, and my mom. So I knew. So I had called... I think I missed, they closed early Wednesday, so I called the vet first thing Thursday morning and said, you know, can I bring him today? And I couldn't because, you know, she's leaving on vacation. She's just like, how about 10 o'clock Friday morning? I'm like, okay. And I texted Lydia and I just said, can you check in with him? But I think tomorrow's the day. And she, you know, texted me back and she said, yeah, he's ready. He said he has kittens waiting for him. So I don't know if that meant. He's going to be a kitten with them. I don't know. I don't need kittens. So, um, yeah, he was ready. And um, so he's, I think I aggravated him so much that day because I kept petting him and combing him and brushing him and kissing on him. You know, a cat can only take so much of that. But the next morning he got up and it was my day off. So he got up and did our morning cuddles. He didn't always do that. It was always so nice. Usually it's because I he needed to eat and I was sleeping in too late or something. Um, Claire is really good. She's now trying to wake me up at 5.30. <clears throat> so he, um, yeah. So he got, we did morning cuddles and he got a brush in and, um, you know, we had to be there at 10. Of course, this cat, and, you know, a lot of times, you know, cats sick because they don't eat. But this diabetes makes you eat, like eat and eat and eat. Crazy. And I don't give a shit. All week, he had the, all the, I don't know. We must have gone through a case of food. And Claire now told her we're going to get back to some reality here because you're not getting sick. Anyway, so I took on my drove. I didn't put him in. I didn't want to put him in a carrier. And, uh, but you know, the first time I talked to him, so it was two times, Lydia, you know, well, actually one time and we texted. But that first time he said, the first thing he said to her is before I said anything, he does not want to go back to the vet's office for the day. And what's interesting, Oscar's super easygoing, you know, until he's not, he's a cat. But the last time he had been there, I needed them to trim his nails and they couldn't even get to his back nails. He was so wild. And that, that's not like Oscar. He had had it. He was pissed. You know, you don't have any food. 
you don't have any water you're just well maybe there's water but you can't go to the bathroom because cats don't like to do that and then here is you know they're poking his foot to get blood so yeah so i'm glad we never had to because really i was making an appointment for the next um actually for, for next monday so anyway i drove him and he was on my lap digging into but i i just couldn't i said let's not have an accident i don't need to you know get up to heaven anytime soon i don't think but we got there and she's in surgery so i had his pink bed <coughs> i'll probably, i'll post that on instagram but so i had him all so he made the windows you know down enough and so wind and we were watching the birds and the trees and and so i don't know i mean i know some of you have been through it or have had it done but basically it's unusual because it's COVID, so we were doing it outside, which I actually kind of liked, right? So, you know, maybe that comes and we talk, and, um, you know, I could have taken him to an internist, or, you know, at some point you just say no. No. Yeah. So, we were, I love her, and, you know, we've been through a lot together, and um, so she, what you do is you get a shot, right? And he's in my arms, you know, and and basically that shot just, I guess it like paralyzes them or, you know, makes them very still. And that takes like mm, 10 minutes to, full, to to get to that point. And then, um, you know, when I was ready, I walked her over and there was him over and there was an overhang. And then what they do is they have to give the second shot, which stops the heart in the leg. Like, so he needed to be sort of laid out. And um, so we did that. And um, it was very peaceful. It is peaceful. If we could only do that for people, right? But then you know, my mother, I know the last four days of my mother's body being alive. She wasn't in there, I don't think. But it was so hard to watch suffering like that. And to think that, you know, there's nowhere she's going, but she's dying. That we can't end that. And that body, maybe more for me, but I, I just told myself, I felt like my mother's spirit, her soul's not in that body. She's with me, actually, I think. So, um, yeah. Anyway, and then, you know, he's being cremated privately. So I just get his ashes back. And it's going to say Sir Oscar on his box. And when I die and I'll be cremated, I'm going to have all my animals that I have cremated with me. Their, their remains. And now it'll come like in a week. And then they, you know, they bill you. Um... And, you know, the hardest is you come home alone. But this is the first time I've come home without my mom. In some ways, it's so hard for her that I help her through. It's weird. But I have Clara. I know my mom's here. You know, it's funny. I said to my mom the day before, I need to know you're with me. I know you're with me, but I always want proof, right? This is the part of my mother and me. I said, just come to meet my dreams. Because I never remember my dreams. I don't. They say... If you get up immediately and start writing, you'll remember, but, um, so I dreamt that, and she was in a kitchen, and she had a little Asian girl, like, 10 or 11, little girl, they're so sweet at that age, and she was, like, about maybe 40 or 50, she looked so beautiful, and just so refreshed and glowing, and I don't remember most, but I do remember her saying, throw the carrots out. Like, what do you mean throw the carrots out? What? So I came, but I thought, she's here. Okay, she did it. She's here. And um, I came downstairs, and I had left carrots out on the counter. So, yeah. So, yeah, I just needed to tell this story. I just wish we could pause our heart. So it didn't hurt so bad, but he just can't. And Claire, when I came home, I honestly feel like his spirit was with me still, but I came home and she started playing like, a, like this she used to play in the day like crazy. And she started playing like that. So I kind of felt like he was here, you know? Um, but she's not looking for him. You know, uh, we're going to have a new routine. So I got, I'm working on the, ugh, me versus cat pee. Who do you think is going to win that one? So, yeah, it's like versus, versus claws. But I took up that litter box and all that. And, um, you know, I, I, I had two big ones downstairs. So I'm going to change it to one big one, one little one. Because she doesn't need all that. Make it easier for her. And then 
I have a big one in my bathroom because he's a big cat. But um, I'm going to change it to a little one and see. She might not even really need that. You know, I hate having a litter box in my bathroom, let me tell you. But I don't want too much change. So I'm going to do that and um, go down every day. I, I'm worse. They don't use that one downstairs as much. They started using the one in the living room. But I gotta get, I'm going to be down there twice a day. Making sure it's nice for her. And, um, yeah, I'm worried because, you know, I've been home part-time. And I'm going back full-time. And I'm so grateful that I could be home part-time because of my some of my issues. But, um, you know, it's, it's an eight-hour day. And then where I live, it can be 45 minutes each way. Depends on how much, you know, traffic's not as bad right now because the government's not in. Not back. You know, they're still teleworking. It's a long day. You know, but um, my new thing is get up, feed her, and then we play. And then when I get home, she eats, and we're going to play. I, you know, I used to play all the time with him. And then I guess with Oscar, you know, or my mom died. I just got out of the habit. So on Instagram, I showed all and took now. Of course, there's toys all over the house I didn't see. But I threw some out, and um, I'm going to give some to the food bank for cats that don't, you know, you can't afford to feed your cat. So I'm going to do some of that. Because she's plenty. <laughs> so I put them in my living room, dining room, and I'm going to let them stay till my cleaners come. And then all the sparkly balls have been moved. <laughs> and a couple of things she's played with in it, but um, yeah. So, and then, you know, I'll put some in my bedroom to play with her and then down here and let some stuff go. I'm all about now letting stuff go. So I'm going to work on that and... You know, my therapist always was like, you know, mini steps, like do something for five minutes, but I do 20 minutes, like gardening or whatever. And you, sometimes you end up doing more, sometimes 20 minutes. I have a little, I either set my phone or I have a little thing. I, I got my mom this uh, timer to wear around her neck because she's always placing that timer and losing it. I laughed at her. But here I am wearing that timer. So I do that. Um, and thank God for YouTube. Like today... I'm going to post this today. So today is Sunday and one of my friends is having her mother-in-law and, you know, people can't come, but I'm going to go over there for a little bit <coughs> and just eat. You know, I'm not eating well, but, um, I'm going to do that and then I'm making a cake. So I found this cake. It's a Betty Crocker cookbook and, um, I'm going to try to put on my Pinterest because apparently you just can't, you know take people's recipes and link them to your account. So I'm going to do it on there. But Pinterest, you can. So I'm going to do that. It's a zucchini lemon pound cake. I guess her mother-in-law likes pound cake. And I have zucchini. It just sounded yummy. So the only thing I really had to buy were lemons for it. So I'm going to do that and film it. And I have grocery stuff to do. And um, I have, you know, Trader Joe's to upload. I still have a couple more Dollar Trees to upload. So yeah, I'm going to concentrate on this. So much fun. And I appreciate you guys so much. Has helped me so much during this pandemic. It's not everyone needs this, or but I can't explain it. It's just I feel connected, and I know that I am connected because a lot of you feel connected to me, and I appreciate that. And I feel heard and supported, and it's in such a positive way and a quiet way. It's just it's been a miracle for me. So I'm gonna need more of that as I grieve my bubba. You know, and um, so hard to do the right thing, but so lucky and blessed that we can end their suffering. Now, like I said, I can remember with God, I was like, please, just my my mom sometimes suffered really badly, and you know? um, she would lay in the hospital bed, just go, oh, it was so bad. I filmed it because I wanted to remember when I missed her that she wasn't suffering like that, and never again. I remember telling him, take my suffering, I'll suffer. You take her, take her suffering, and, I'll, and he did. He did. She didn't suffer, but ooh, my suffering. So, yeah, you know, with losing Mimi and now Oscar is just um, wow. And I have one of my supporters here, subscribers, and she lost a bunch of people during COVID, and she's struggling. So we're all struggling. You know, that's the thing. We all have so much more in common than we don't. And um, being empathetic and an empath. Yeah, I'm learning. I'm learning how to protect my energy. I'm a little nervous, you know. Uh, I just, yeah. And the world's changing quickly to me. And yeah, but I'm still careful. I'm just not getting COVID. So anyway, thank you guys. I appreciate it. And look forward to your comments and 
or not. And I thank you for watching this. And if it's not your thing, I understand. Um, I'll be back hopefully with some Trader Joe tomorrow. And I got to film all this interesting food I got. And I'm going to go make a cake. I'm going to do that first. I'm going to somehow put it all together like magic and share it with you guys. So anyway, thank you. I appreciate you so much. You mean a lot. And um, I hope I mean a lot to you.